What's up, everybody? Supreme Decisions here. And tonight, I actually want to go through something because it's been a while since you guys have heard from me. But I'm going to make this kind of kind of quick because I just came across, uh, uh, I guess, the actual lawsuit that I wrote up um, May 8th, 2014, which is amazing to me because I had even forgot this was written. Um, because what happened... The question is, what happens when you are made famous, quote unquote, or a public figure by someone else, and then they attempt to use the public figure defense when you go to, I guess, stop them from doing it? Because if you remember most of the videos I talk about, I talk about um, 2010, I was charged with racketeering and influence corruption and blah 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 whatever but i was charged with 108 counts of racketeering 20 years per count was the deal that i was given which if you do the map is over 2000 years but one of the things that was done was the story made it to cnn it went to a few other outlets but the thing that caught my attention was not the major newspapers because I actually did end up suing Fox. I did sue Cox Media. And there are things that are, quote, they may be gone, but they are not deleted, if that makes sense. Because of the Patriot Act, there's nothing that goes onto the internet that is actually deleted, even if you take it off. Now, here's the, here's the thing that was interesting to me because, like I said, I, I ran across this lawsuit that I wrote because many people, when you're involved with the law for whatever reason, they have this thing called the dollar paper. That's what it was down in um, Georgia. It's called the dollar paper. When you get arrested, what happens is they put your mug shot up. They put what you were charged with, but they put it into the in the newspaper and then they also put it online now what happens for most of it when you're exonerated of these allegations or whatever they never print a retraction and like for myself i was on the front page of multiple newspapers and no one even printed well let me take that the atlanta journal constitution actually did print on october 26th um, the acquittal. I was just on page three. It wasn't it wasn't the cover, but it was page three. Um, but the thing was funny because when you're doing this, you don't ever think like, oh, I'm going to go out and I'm gonna sue these corporations. And I'm gonna win, and then because you don't think that they actually are going to just do something or these little things that by just putting your name out there actually does no harm when in fact like i said because of the patriot act it stays there forever so people can just google you and see whatever somebody's ever written about you and it doesn't matter if it's true or not and all this other stuff but what happened in this case was a lot of the material that was printed about myself was printed via third party information that with, from people that had never spoken to me, had never participated or even seen any of the things that I was doing, and had only heard of me from other newspapers or other entities. And I thought it was I thought it was comical. So I'm gonna actually go through this real quick because I actually have some court cases in here and a little bit about the verbiage. Because when you're doing the suits you're looking at two torts that involve the com the communication of false information about a person, a group, or an entity such as a corporation. Because we're dealing with libel because it's dealing in print. Libel is any defamation that can be seen, such as a writing, printing, effigy, eff or excuse me, effigy, movie, or statue. Now, slander is any defamation that is spoken and heard. The reason why I have those two in there is because, like I said, I, I actually sued Fox Media. 
because one of the young ladies that was doing a story was Jody Fleischer. Now, again, what's funny is that's not her real name. That's her <laughs> her actual her her what do you call that? Her her made up name because she's a reporter. But yeah, I'll get into that later. You guys will have to tune in for from Rico the Guru. Anyway, now one of the things that you actually have to go through, prove or point out, is this thing called material benefit. Because the material benefit is they made a profit from the use of my name and my likeness without permission. I never spoke to them directly and they used it and they just kept going. I had also never held or ran for a public office, nor has ever voluntarily assumed a position in the public eye, nor enjoyed a high degree of prominence and access to mass media that would allow them to influence the policy and to counter criticism leveled against me. Now, I did not thrust the likeness nor name into the public eye by doing anything with my name and by the publishing of the private affairs by Cox Media <laughs> and affiliate companies making libelous actions responsible for thrusting me into the public eye. Now, one of the tricks that they use now is things such as YouTube because everybody wants to go viral. They're using TikTok because everybody wants to go viral and nobody understands the context of viralism. Because what was funny, at one point, getting a million views, that was viral. Now, if you get a few thousand views, you're going viral. Which, you know, it's the equivalent of everybody in your high school seeing it versus everybody in a football stadium seeing it. So, it's context. But anyway, one of the things that I pointed out was Gertz v. Robert Welch, Inc. And this is a 1974 case. Why? Because that's a foundational case. Public figures are those who thrust themselves into the public eye and invite close scrutiny. Now, what happens is, that was one of the things that I point out during the material benefit. I didn't do that. So one of the things that most media companies now do when they start to just use your name or even these trolls is the fact that they'll say, well, he's got... 200 YouTube videos, so he put himself into this light. Now, again, knowing the defense is half the battle, but that's why you start the foundation with you didn't do something. Because at the time, I had not put out a thousand videos such as I do now where I'm showing my face, I'm giving you my name, I'm doing all these things to give myself popularity or put myself in an ideal of a public figure. Now, I also used another case, and it's, again, you, I'll go into this later. The California Supreme Court rejected the claim of the news media that is not liable for reporting someone else's libelous statements about a public figure. Now, the reason I put that in there is because, remember, I said I didn't make myself a public figure. They did. So now when they made me a public figure... They then use statements not from me, but from someone else. And the statements from someone else was a lie. And that's Carwitz v. Global International. And it's a California case. And it's a 1998 case. The court rejected the media's argument that a neutral reportage defense that applies to public figures in some jurisdictions, should also apply to private figures. Because, remember, I was still private. I wasn't a public figure. However, I, used, I allowed them to use their argument that, oh, he was. Okay, if I was, it's because you made me one. So now they can't backtrack and say, oh, well, he was a private citizen. Well, if that was the case, then you did make him a public one. Therefore, you don't have the grounds to fight him as a private citizen. Now, again, it's all about verbiage. One, the news media entity must be neutral, merely reporting charges made 
by other persons without taking a position itself. Now, what I pointed out was the reporter took a position when she stated, the goings on of the others thought to be like me. So basically she associated others and then created a group and placed me in it. The charges must be reported in a substantially accurate way. The republication of accusations made against private figures are never protected by the neutral reported privilege. Because you remember, they must be reported accurate. I am a private figure. They are never protected. So just putting my name out in this dollar paper or whatever does not exonerate them because it's never protected. Now, Mason v. The New Yorker magazine in 1991, a plaintiff alleging libel satisfied the actual malice standard if. Always remember that if and and or the biggest um, words in law. If it can be proved that the author deliberately altered the plaintiff's words and the alteration resulted in a material change in the meaning conveyed by the plaintiff in the original statement. Now, here's what, where it becomes beautiful. Because you remember I said, the plaintiff alleging libel, libel satisfies the actual malice standard. This is where I spoke about going against trolls. Because what they do is they take portions of your words, portions of your videos, and they change the entire context of what's being said. Now, when they do that, they become liable to you. Because, again, this is one of the things that I'm talking about constantly. We conclude that a deliberate alteration of the words uttered by a plaintiff does not equate with knowledge of falsity, of falsity for purpose of New York Times v. Sutherland and Gertz v. Robert unless... The alteration results in a material change in the meaning conveyed by the statement. The use of quotations to attribute words not in fact spoken bears in a most important way on the inquiry, but it does not disprove in every case. And what it then goes into, because again, I'm speaking about the lawsuit itself and also about the trolls that are on the internet. You can also add in negligence because when you are taking samples of someone else's videos and then you are using and placing in your own words while it's, it's, it's great against copyright. However, you then become liable for the words that you're speaking against this other person if you're using their words and changing the actual meaning of it and you're doing it to satisfy an audience. And I think one of the biggest ones that happened that we saw is Tasha K. She was sued. She is probably going to file some sort of bankruptcy. And even when she does that, she's going to still have payments that will be made. Now, does it really destroy what she had? No. But the simple fact is she did that. She was found guilty of it. And it was done through negligence. And these are the things that I'm speaking about because it seems like it's like very intricate when it's not because you're keeping it as law is situational and not subjective. Because whenever you're going through something, you also have to understand which case goes where and when and why. That's why I give these things to you. Because Toomey v. Ohio, a direct personal substantive punisibary, I, I, I screwed that one up. I Because again, I'm just reading it. <laughs> Interest in the statement basically it's my statement and because i have it on platforms where i they're monetized i have a personal interest in the payments i have a personal interest in to, in the monetization so when you're deliberately taking my words out of context you are then liable because it's if it's done with intention well, here's the great part, because most of them can't resist themselves because they do it multiple times. 
you can then hold them liable for it. Every person is protected from false statement made by others during his or her lifetime. I'm going to say that one more time. Every person is protected from false statements made by others during his or her lifetime. The tort of defamation of character requires a plaintiff to prove the defendant made an untrue statement of fact about, the, about you. Two, the statement was intentionally or accidentally published to a third party. Now, a third party would be TikTok. A third party would be YouTube. Because here's the great part about it. Um, I watched Afro Man. And he was sued for defamation by these police officers, which I thought was hysterical. Because he didn't use their information. He used his videos. He then made a song based on the videos that belonged to him. So the statements that was made in his song were things that actually happened to him. That was directed from someone else. Intentional action. That's why he's going to win the lawsuit. And then when he countersues them, they're all going to become liable for their actions against him. Now, when a false statement appears in a letter, newspaper, magazine, book, photograph, movie, video, and the like, that is called liable. Always remember that. That's why when we're talking about it, because most of the time now when you talk about a letter, newspaper, magazine, book, or photograph, we're talking about somewhere online. So if it's somewhere online and it's in fact false, you now have an opportunity to be compensated by those that have wronged you. Because again, I actually said it earlier, New York Times v. Sullivan is a 1964 case. The Supreme Court protect the newspaper from libel from the state court suits by public officials because of the First Amendment requirement of freedom of press was designed and upheld by judicial interpretation for the news to report to we the people and the goings on of the elected officials, not the actions of private man standing on the right side of national security. Libel can claim no total totalismatic immunity from the constitutional limitation. It must be measured by standards that satisfy the First Amendment. Every person has the exclusive legal right to control and profit from the commercial use of his or her name and personality during his or her lifetime. I'm going to say that one more time because this is again when I'm speaking about the trolls. I'm speaking about the new, the new era of life. Every person has the exclusive legal right to control and profit from the commercial use of his or her name and the personality during his or her lifetime. Because a lot of times you hear people, they, uh, what do you call that? The, the, they'll impersonate someone or they'll mimic someone. Now, Michael Buffer, Bruce Buffer, both of them have things that are copyrighted that are part of their character, which is, let's get ready to rumble, and Bruce Buffer, it's time, because these are the things that are part of their personality, these are the things that they can actually sue for, because these are things they aren't actually known for, now, do they do it, not often, but they've done it, just to show that, I, this is my muscle, I can flex it a little bit. But this is why and how they're able to do it. Any attempt by any, uh, excuse me, any attempt by another person to appropriate a living person's name or identity for commercial person is actionable. So again, back to the trolls. When you start making videos and you're bashing someone's name, and this is one of the things that I used to trip out because. Tommy Sotomayor, he would be attacked constantly. I watched it happen for years. He would find out who these people were, and he would do nothing, knowing he could. I'm going to say that one more time. He knew he could. He just chose not to. 
And I was like, why, why not? Just to, just to give him to stop a little bit. But I understood it because, again, the attempt, when they're using his name, they're using his image, their or identity, and they're getting paid for it on YouTube through Super Chat. They're getting donations. All of those are now subject to a lawsuit. That makes them liable. And to recover the unauthorized profits made by the offending party, because again, everything that's made from Google, Google Pay, AdSense, the, even the cash apps and all, all of those are subject to come under and be paid to the person that they've wronged. And they can object, obtain an injunction against further unauthorized use of his or her name or identity. That is what I actually did against Fox because the, I refused to do an interview. I did. I told him I'll do one. I did the one, and I told him I was not going to do any more. So Fox, the young lady that I spoke with at Fox, she said, you either do the interview or we're just going to run whatever we want to run. I said, if that's how you feel about it, let's get it. Because what you're not going to do is bully me. I'm too big to be bullied and too fat to run. And that's one of the things that they learned. Because when I filed the injunction, it was immediate. And what the great part about it was the supervisor at Fox was like, why are we running the story anyway? He's not that popular. Like, <laughs> nobody cares. So they gave up the fight because, again, it's not one of those things that would possibly happen now because now it's a different time it's a different light there's different accesses so now when they drop something it goes out to a million viewers immediately so even if i was to file an injunction again it's on the internet not going anywhere they can actually quote unquote take it off their servers however or delete it the only thing they're de deleting is the ip or the actual uh web address they're not deleting the actual story. So, the false light invasion of privacy occurs when information is published about a person that is false or places the person in a false light, is highly offensive to a reasonable person, and is published with knowledge or in reckless disregard of whether the information was false or would place the person in a false light. Now, this is one of those that I actually, I actually pull up because it's it's entertaining to me. Because most people don't realize that they'll get mad at me because I won't take the case, or for, they'll get mad. Oh well, well he took money from me, and then every time they post it, it's a different amount. And I'm like, okay, cool. If I did that, then what 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 are we doing? Because I always tell people, okay, if I'm supposed to be ghosting you, why has my number not changed? I've had the same number since 2010. Why do I have the same email? Why am I still posting videos in the same place? All the things that would go, go against what they're saying or actually give them access to me, they're choosing not to go through, and then they're choosing to create something that is false, which they then don't understand is now they're liable. I had a young lady, um, I want to say a few years ago, posted, um, she actually posted and then she reported that I took $20,000 from her. And I was like, that's amazing. So when I got called, I actually got called by the FBI. Because again, $20,000, that's a federal crime. I sent them everything I had. Here you go. Here's the whole conversation. Here's all the documentation. I filed a lawsuit I want to say an hour after I got to send all the information to the feds. She then cut me a check for $15,600. It was literally 72 hours. But the problem was she didn't understand that just putting something on Google isn't okay when you know it's a lie. These things are... Things that, because 90% of people wouldn't even care about it. However, I cared about it because 
She was attempting to do something to take me from my family. She was looking to take my freedom. She was looking to do things that were beyond the scope of just talk. And having to cut that check, I got to leave me the hell alone. But it, she then understood words have meaning. Words have power. Use it wisely. And here's the greater part. If you don't like something or somebody, stop watching them. Stop listening to them. Stop going around them. Go do something else with your life because life is too short not to enjoy it. If you're spending time being bitter about somebody, why indulge in it? Because I saw one, I saw a post the other day and it was it was one of the most amusing things. It said, don't get mad at the clowns for being clowns. Get mad at yourself for going to the circus. And I thought about that because I was like, if I'm going to keep indulging in stupid stuff, why do I keep going where the stupid is if it's irritating me? And that was even the thing that I, I used to love, again, with Thomas Sotomayor. People would go there to call him names and call him and just do irritating stuff. And then they'll talk about how much they don't like him. But then you would see them in the chat every day. Every day, every time, didn't matter what time he popped on, it'd be two in the morning, it'd be one at one in the afternoon, they're on there. And it would crack me up because I'm like, if you don't like him, why are you listening to him? Why are you following him? Because they need that. Because any justification for their life being sad is good for them. But these are also things that, again, he had an opportunity to sue them if he chose to do so. Now, the report need not be defamatory. To be actionable. This type of invasion of privacy tends to occur when a writer condenses or fictionalizes a story and uses stock footage to illustrate a news story. False light includes, but is not limited to, embellishment. The addition of false information to a story, which places someone in a false light. Distortion. The arrangement of materials or photographs to give a false impression and fictionalization references to real people in fictionous articles or in the conclusion in works of fiction to discourage characters that represent real people or excuse me to disguise characters that, <laughs> that represent real people must be getting tired but anyway but understand that because again is it news or is it entertainment? Because if it's entertainment, there are even guidelines. There, are, what do you call those? Those those ratings, which lets you know this is a fictional story. This is an embellishment because you have to start off with that. You can't just do it and then say, "Oh, what's the movie?" No, it's not because there are even people that have played characters that cannot disassociate themselves from those characters because people believe or perceive them people to be the characters they're playing. And the use of a person's name or likeness for commercial purposes without consent is misappropriation. The law protects an individual from exploiting by others for their exclusive benefit. Because even if you're taking these videos, let's say you're taking them from someone that's not monetized and using their videos and you are monetized, you are now liable for that. Because at the end of the day, if you are changing their words, if you are changing it, now, not saying you can't criticize. You can take the videos, do reactions. You can take the videos and, <clears throat> excuse me, and do things that actually give commentary. But it's when you're embellishing, when you're lying, when you're changing meanings. That's when you become something else, which is why it's best to create your own content instead of worrying about the content of others. Because the law recognizes each person's right to live his or her life without being subjected to unwanted and unwarranted and undesired publicity. A violation of this right constitutes the tort of invasion of the right of privacy. The fact doesn't have to be untrue. I'm going to say that one more time. The fact doesn't have to be untrue. If they are not a person of public, let's say it's someone that's not posting videos on YouTube, and you're doing things 
that place them in a bad light, you are now liable because you are invading their privacy because they're choosing not to be part of the, the circus. Place someone in a false light constitution inva- constitutes an invasion of privacy. Now, the tort of outrage or intentional infliction of emotional distress. Now, this is the one that most YouTubers get because you have the keyboard warriors. Like they super tough sitting behind a keyboard at home when nobody knows the address. Because I've even had a young lady talk crazy to me and I thought it was humorous. So what I did, because I kept telling her, I said, yeah, I'm not really that dude. I said, because I used to be a skip tracer back in the day. So when she started sending me all kind of crazy stuff online, I politely sent her a screenshot of her house. I sent her her IP address, and I sent her her address, and I was like, please just leave me alone. I actually did the same thing with Jody Fleischer. I did that with a police officer in um, Gwinnett County, and I kept telling them, Don't talk to me crazy because you have no idea who I am. And the thing is, when you have someone that has access, which most people do now, it becomes something different. And it's I'm not saying that to, you know, I'm, I'm scary. No, I'm just letting you know that there are means in which I can file this lawsuit because I know where you live at. I can actually have you serve because I know where you work at. I know who your family members are. I know who you go talk to every day because I can find those things. Because the one thing the, the one thing I learned early in sales or anything else was people's favorite subject is themselves. The one thing they can't resist even nowadays with Instagram and TikTok is making themselves important and making everyone around them feel they're bigger than they are Because they need to have some sort of grandeur in their life. So what they'll do is that they'll post themselves with a sister. They'll post themselves with a brother. They'll post themselves in several different places. Including their home. And then what happens is now we're in a society where everything we sign up for, we got to give all our personal information for. So guess what happens? That information because the Patriot Act is now stuck on the web and never goes anywhere. So we also have to be mindful of what it is we're putting out. Because even YouTube tells you, when you're doing a video, get to one specific place that doesn't show outside. Don't show land um, markers. Don't tell people when you're at. Because there are things that are, there are things that can be taken out of context. So it becomes a protection issue. So now whenever I take that protection from you, it then becomes a reality check. Because I can then hold you liable for the things that you're doing and saying and all this other stuff. Because most people don't even realize once you upload something to YouTube, YouTube actually holds your your IP address. Your IP address is linked to an address. Most people have no clue. about. Let's say I upload it from my phone. Guess what? Your phone has locations turned on. We're giving out this information freely every day and any day and not even paying attention to it and not understanding this little bit of information can help someone suing you because you thought it was a great idea to make a joke or play even like these pranks. You're thinking it's a great idea to do these things, which is the um, intentional infliction of emotional distress and you won't be held liable for it when in fact that's exactly what can happen to you because all the plaintiff must prove is that the defendant's conduct was so outrageous in character and so extreme in degree as to go beyond all possible boundaries of decency and to be regarded as astrocious uh, excuse me austatious and utterly intolerable in a civilized society because one of the things I hate, I'm not even going to lie, because I've, I've had it happen to me once. And the young man, he found out I'm not that dude to play with. And then here in Texas, um, a young man, again, adult men playing pranks on someone. 
He played a prank and someone shot him. A guy goes in the grocery store. He's playing a prank and a guy pulls a pistol out on him. Like, why are you playing? Just leave people alone. If you do your own thing and leave people alone, we can all live free and be great. But even in those moments, you're causing emotional distress. You're giving people your location. You've said your name somewhere. You've signed up for something, and now you can be held liable for their actions because you're an adult playing, and you're mad because someone don't want to play with you. Because these are the things that most people don't get into, don't think about, and don't actually appreciate the fact that the freedom that's bestowed upon you can be taken because it is done with cost. Because the tort doesn't even require any publication to a third party or physical contact between the plaintiff and defendant. Because even like the one, I think uh, the young man, when people are walking by, he's a bush. And he just starts walking out on people. He's causing emotional distress. He doesn't have to publish that to YouTube. Because if they find out where he's at or who he is, they can sue him. He's liable because his actions are outside the boundaries of a civilized society. Because he's playing. He thinks it's funny. But he's playing with people that are not playing with him. And freedom of speech, however, does not apply to libelous statements. Opinions are okay, but people cannot write harmful lies about individuals. And these are the things that trolls do constantly. And the one thing that I talk about, uh, been talking about through this whole thing, is called the Stored Communications Act. It's information placed on the internet without permission. Also, the Patriot Act is one of the reasons that you can be held liable for putting other folks stuff online because it does not go anywhere just because the web address get deleted that information is online somewhere forever that's why you can be held like that because you got newspapers magazine and broadcasters are liable for republishing of libel or slander because they have editorial control over their communication again you control what it is that you're saying and doing and watching and and all these other extras because you're editing. It's yours. You have control over that. And now, to recover in a libel or slander suit, the plaintiff must show evidence of four elements. The defendants convey a defamatory message. That the, the material was published, meaning it was conveyed to someone other than the plaintiff. Two, the plaintiff could be identified as the person referred to in the defamatory. Uh, defamatory material. And four, the plaintiff suffered some injury to his or her reputation as a result of the communication. Now, I was actually going to talk about the Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia lawsuit, but Devin Haney took the road that was most profitable for him. But one of the things he did was he spoke about, he used a um, commentary from Ryan. He didn't say anything. He just used Ryan's words. And he showed that prior to fighting Ryan and prior to Ryan saying what he said, he was going to make X amount of millions of dollars. After Ryan cheated and was found guilty of cheating because if people say, oh, he had a steroid. He had a steroid adjacent, which is a SARM. But he then went out and showed because of that communication he now is getting literally tens of millions of dollars less to fight the same people. So these are things, even in subtle communication. He did, I think he did it on Twitter. But now he's now liable to Devin Haney for his words on Twitter. Because even when he wasn't speaking directly about Devin Haney, using Devin Haney's words, everybody knew he was talking about Devin Haney. Because he kept making references to the fight and how Devin Haney fell. He kept making references to how he was hitting Devin Haney, but he wasn't using Devin Haney's name. So these are things that you have to be cognizant of. Because even in Chaplinsky v. New Hampshire, it's a 1942 case, there are certain well-defined and narrowly limited classes of speech. 
the prevention and punishment of which has never been thought to raise constitutional problems. Defam defamatory speech is not essential to the expo uh, exposition of ideas and that it can be regulated without raising constitutional concern. Because again, I don't have to have a constitutional issue. Because yes, you have free speech. Free speech isn't free. And libelous speech is not protected by the Constitution. And you have the things such as actual malice. Knowledge that was false or reckless, uh, with reckless disregard to whether it was false or not. The actual malice standard does not require any ill will on the part of the defendant. It requires the defendant to be aware that the statement is false or very likely false. This is what caught Tasha K. She made statements not technically knowing they were false, but she also did not know they weren't true. And she said them repeatedly. Again, which is why she lost her case. Because reckless disregard is present if the plaintiffs can show that the defendant had serious doubts as to the truth of the publication. I'm going to say that one more time. You're speaking about something that you don't know if it's true. You're probably guessing that it's not true, but you say it anyway. And my favorite, exaggeration did not equal defamation because the challenged comments had a factual basis. Now, whenever we, all, we always talk about it because a friend of mine, he speaks, or my brother, he actually speaks. And he is one of the most literal people that I've ever seen in my life. Because, like, he'll tell a story and you'll think, okay, he got a little salt and pepper in there. He, he, he sees that up. And then you'll get it be like, that is word for word, dude. Like, I, how do you do that? That is crazy. But then whenever I give you a story, I'm going to give you a little bit of flavor on that one. I'm going to put a little salt, a little pepper, might, might even add some paprika. But I'm going to put it in there. Because to me, sometimes you need to brighten up the story. Not that I'm using anything that's not true, but I'm exaggerated or making more colorful the exact story. Excuse me. And even in the case of doing this, one of the people was the district attorney for abuse of power. The reason being is because prior to my arrest, he actually did a news and I'm like an hour long interview about me. And I was like, are you crazy? And he had a personal interest in the actual um, prosecution. And I'm like, dude, who? So basically what he was doing during that interview was uh, influencing the potential jury fool. And the crazy part about it. He didn't have immunity once they acted outside that scope because he was speaking on things in definitives prior to any proof being had. So he is now outside the scope. It also fell under prosecutorial misconduct. It also fell under due process with the defamation because why him speaking in definitives and not having proof of it and also me being exonerated, he was, I was one, two, I was able to um, call him to the stand. But he also had a duty to not prosecute. Not that I could not have been prosecuted. He just couldn't be there or be first chair. He had to allow someone else to do that. But he didn't. And whenever you're looking at these, if you have someone with a channel, they only need one view. This is why I talked about the trolls. You don't need a whole bunch of people to see your lie. They can have it on private and share it one time. That makes them liable for those actions. Now, whenever I talk about this, these are not just subjected for one little incident because we have different levels of publication now. So always understand one of the things that you can always protect at any time 
is your reputation. So, thank you guys. I love y'all. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. Continue to support the podcast. Let's keep listening. Drop your questions and holler at your boy. Greatest now at yahoo.com. Let's go.